Okay, so what I'm doing is I'm wiring up a 50 by 80 new shop and I'm trying to do this by myself. Uh, my wife works, so I'm doing what I've done for two decades is I'm trying to do it by myself. And I'm trying to pull wires um, on that second purlin from the ground, from the panel, left, up, up over the door, down, there's a junction box there, bringing it around, bringing it around. I've dropped it down here, right there, there's a junction box. And then uh, bringing it over to light switches, tying all the light switches together. Then I'm gonna actually go up and feed all the way across to the light fixtures right there. And I'm using 12 gauge solid core or solid wire. Uh, and I'm running, uh, I've been running four conductors through there. I'm gonna run uh, ground and neutral separately uh, in different conduit to these boxes, but I'm running uh, four number 12 solid. The conduit capacity, as I understand from the NEC, is nine conductors in half inch conduit. This is EMT. And I've been having just a bear of a time trying to pull these things. And that's why there are junction boxes like there and then back over here is because I wasn't able to make the pull in one straight uh, run. Now, I'm not an electrician, but I know that uh, the NEC stipulates that you're not supposed to go over 360 degrees in total of bend on any run, and that would have been way in excess of 360, but I thought I could get away with it. Um, no one's going to come and inspect this stuff, I did, but whatever. That's not really a good attitude, but that's what I was going to do, and it didn't work. Uh, so I, I tried lube. Lube wasn't working well. So here's what I'm going to do to try to make this easier, since I don't have uh, someone to lube the wires for me, and I don't want to have to... Uh, try to push lubricated wires up into the conduit. Sometimes I get it started that way. Um, sometimes I'll come along and I'll give it a little little nudge as I come over and dress the wires coming off the spools to make sure that they're flowing and curving and feeding in smoothly without damaging the uh, the insulation, the jacket, the uh, the protective layer. Uh, it's got a nylon outer coating. This is THHN that I'm pulling, and uh, I don't want to have to handle greasy, uh, you know, slick wires there. Also, I don't want to run back to where I'm actually doing the pull and have greasy, slick hands. So I'm trying to figure out a better way to do this. And taking one of these tubes and then connecting it to some clear tubing and squeezing this and shoving it into the, into the conduit has worked. But trying to grab this and squeeze all the time uh, through a small diameter tube is taking entirely too much force and too much time to put the lubricant into the conduit. So the idea here is... I'm going to take a grease gun and I'm going to adapt that to the small tubing and I'm going to use a grease gun to shove the lubricant uh, into the conduit. So I have some small diameter tube that I have from a project from years and years ago. One of these is a piece of this is already connected up to my other jug of this um, and I've forced it over the nipple and, and heated it and gotten it to sit on there nicely. I'm going to leave that one connected just in case and I'm actually going to use uh, my second jug here and see how this works. So, uh, I don't know, I'm just gonna pick a, yeah, okay, that looks about good, maybe 18 inches, something like that. And then on the grease gun here, um, I got one of the ones that it uses, uh, it just, you can pump it with one hand. Uh, it doesn't have the lever on the side, it's actually got more like the pistol style as it's conveniently called, the pistol grip. So, I've already opened this up at the store, made sure that it uh, had the right kind of uh, fitting on it. And what I'm going to do, when this comes out of the package here, it's going to come like this. Okay, and here's the, the straw that's going to come off the front of it, and there's the coupler for the grease zerks if we were actually running grease in there, and we're not going to use uh, any of that. Take this. And what this is, is usually these are set up to also run bulk grease. Uh, the grease in grease tubes is exposed on, the, uh, on one end. There's usually a metal cap on one end you pop off. The other end is covered with a semi-rubber plastic, soft plastic, just to keep the dust and keep the out and the grease in, um, just in case. And that end, that open end, goes down here. And then the metal cap where you've peeled the top goes up up here, but they're usually designed to also work with bulk grease so that you can actually force grease in here if you had a bulk fill, if you were buying grease in 55 gallon drums, I guess that's how it would come. You can force that down inside of here. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to actually just fill this because it'll work with bulk grease. I'm hoping it's going to work with bulk lubricant.
So I bought a brand new one of these because obviously I didn't want to contaminate it with grease. There's some concern as to whether or not even THHN is actually oil and gas resistant. And there's, I don't want to find out six months from now when I start tripping breakers because I'm, I'm blowing arcs in the uh, conduit and I don't have to replace it. So I'm not going to take a chance of contaminating that. So the first thing I'm going to do is I need an adapter to go to this tubing. And that's what I have here from, oh, there's the other piece of tube I needed. Oops. I wonder what I did with that. And there, neat little fitting. And it's just a 1 8 inch uh, male national pipe thread uh, to a, I believe this was 3 16 yes, 3 16 inch hose barb. And it fits nicely into the tube, which I forgot that I left in the bag from the store. It fits nicely and it fits snugly, so I'm not actually going to even use a uh, uh, hose clamp or any kind of clamping device. I think this the, the friction and the tension of this being swelled over the barb is going to be sufficient to hold it. We're going to find out. I should put pipe dope on here um, to make sure it's not going to leak, but I'm really not too worried about minor leaks. That's part of it. And we'll see if this will actually fit. It's going to be a very short video if it doesn't. And that fits well enough. And then... Okay, and that's why I don't ever get anything done because I misplaced tools just that fast. I just got that wrench just before I turned the camera on and I've already lost it. That's why I don't ever get anything done. So I'm just going to tighten this up. Okay. And then I'm just going to see which one of these is... If one of these is longer, I'll use the longer one. Okay, so there, uh, let's use the square end. So this one's got a better cut. And I'm just going to force that on there. And that's not going, it's going to ever come back off. It's not, yeah, I don't think we're gonna have enough force, hydraulic force pumping this in to make it come off. So now what I wanna do is um, put the lubricant into the grease gun. So we'll take this end off, make sure that's tight up top, tightening the top to the, to the body. That seems secure. I'm going to undo this one. And just before I break it free, I'm going to pull the handle back. There. Tension that spring. See if we can get that off with the spring not dragging too much on the sides with it all compressed in. And see, it's got a rubber plunger. Hopefully this is going to work. No guarantees. Now what I need to do is pour the lubricant down in here, trying to get as few air pockets as possible. I don't know what I'm going to do to mitigate that. And in case it doesn't work, I'm only going to put about maybe half of it and we'll see, how it works, see if it works at all. And that's about half of the uh, quart right there. If this works, this also is nice because the uh, gallon of the same stuff is about, I think it was $37, but two quarts costs $28. So it's quite a bit less expensive to buy it in the gallon pails as opposed to buying these quart dispensers. Suspensing tubes. Eh, I could put more in there. I'm going to. It's got to work, right? Of course it works. You saw it on the. You've seen it on the internet. Okay. Enough. And now we'll just take the rubber plunger, which doesn't want to go back in there because apparently it's under some kind of tension. Hmm. Why that went in? at the store. I pulled it out and checked it to make sure it had a rubber seal. Okay, putting tension on it apparently is not a wise idea. So I'm going to get the spring tension off. See if I can get that. Oh, okay, that's why. Okay. <sighs> when the spring tension is on it, it's swelling this uh, piece out. There. That's the way that should have gone. Okay. There we go, it's burping air. 
All right. Now I'm gonna have to do this by hand. This kind of sucks. Not my wisest choice. I probably should have filled it from the other end. It's the first time I've done this, okay? There we go, and we'll see if this works. It may leak past the uh, center piece. This is not as viscous as, as uh, actual bearing grease is, so uh, don't know. We're gonna find out. Shove that up in there. That's actually shoving the rod up through the fluid there. And then it comes with a ring on this one just to hold it while it's in transit. Let that out. May have to burp it, but hopefully this is fluid enough that I won't have to burp it. And there we go. Let's see if you can see the fluid. And then see, I can do that one handed. There we go. That's good enough for right now. Now it's time to go get the cat to, to not knock the tripod. Damn cat. Anyway, I'm going to go. Uh, go over and get ready to do a pull and I'll, we'll, I'll show you some video of that and we'll see how it works. Okay, so it's been uh, a couple of days since I shot the beginning of this video showing how I assembled that uh, basically grease gun to shoot lube in and it's working really, really well. In the center right up there um, is a junction box which is going to then feed to a light fixture at the end of each of those two runs. So we're going to go back up to the uh, ridge of the building. There's 120 degrees worth of bends doing an offset around the, uh, or not an offset, bypassing an obstacle, which is one of the beams of the building. We're going to come over here. There's a junction box right there uh, from which I will then run uh, lines going that way and going this way as well, just like what you saw in the, that uh, moment ago. That line is going to continue to run. It's going to go through another 120 degrees of bends and then it's going to go to that junction box right there. Okay, And so that's going to be 240 degrees of bends. NEC limitation, I believe, is 360 degrees. I'm going to be pulling uh, one solid 12, one stranded 12, and one solid 14 as ground. So I'm only pulling three conductors through there, but uh, what I've been seeing so far is the bends are kind of a challenge, um, at least with the solid. Having the one strand in there is going to make it a little bit easier, but I'm going to use that uh, to insert lube. So I'm going to actually run the fish tape through from this end where the scissor lift is, and then I'm going to hang the wire spools up there at the uh, ridge, and I'm going to pull from that end right there. And I've also got a way that I'm going to hang the lights, uh, and I may use that for uh, hanging the, uh, the spools. And if I do, I'll show that. Otherwise, I'll make another video about how I'm hanging the lights. I came up with something I think by. I prayed and I got a great idea, thank God, um, with a great idea to reuse some uh, metal plates that, I'm, that are scrap here for hanging the lights. We'll see if I have to use those to hang the spools. But the spools are going to be suspended up there. Then I'll go down to the other end with a scissor lift and pull it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to inject uh, lubricant in the center there, in that, lubricant, in that uh, conduit right there before the first bends. Then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to inject some more lubricant in that junction box right there so it has a fresh dollop of lube to carry it through the next 120 degrees. And I'll show that when I get up there. Okay, so now I'm up here and I'm going to tie off to the fish tape. I'm feeling a little frisky, so I'm actually going to use the fish tape to pull instead of pull tape. It's only about a 40, 38 foot, 35 foot run with, like I said, 240 degrees of bends. We're going to be passing through a junction box. And again, it's just, uh, this is all THHN, it's 12 stranded and 12 solid and 14 solid. So like I said, I'm going to be a little cavalier on this one and I'm just going to go ahead and use the fish tape. Normally I like to use a pull tape, but uh, that's what I'm going to do on this one. I'm going to tie a head on this thing. I've also been doing that a little differently. Uh, granted, this is way under conduit capacity, so this is relatively simple. I'm just going to pass the... Uh, the ground through there, bend it back tightly. I'm using uh, yellow marker tape. I'm getting low on black. I don't use a lot of marker tape normally. I did for the lighting circuits uh, down there for the switches, the two, the three-way and four-way switches. Hopefully I can get enough of this tape built up around this so it'll pull to the next junction box without me having to go along and assist it. I don't know. Alright. I'm worried about leg tags. I just razor that off. 
Okay, I'm going to bring the, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and get the white one in there. I'm going to put it just behind where the ground stops. Again, this is a relatively simple pull. It's not terribly long. It does have 240 degrees and bends, but shouldn't put a whole lot of strain on the, the joint here. Now I'm going to come in a little bit behind that junction with my hot wire. Take that up. And that should be plenty good for what I'm trying to get done here. Let's use the little magic lube box, which I've left behind the camera, of course. Okay. Just a single hand grease gun, as I've showed earlier in the video. I'm going to pass it past the fish tape. You know, four or five inches, get the lube up inside the conduit. Okay, we should be near just short of the first bend. One, two, three, four, five, six, I give it seven. That ought to be plenty good. And now I can just pull that out. The lube is inside there now. And that's just, that's so much easier to squeeze than a gun wire. Okay, shove this in, put the head past there, at least get started. There we go. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna travel back. I'll just fast forward to this section. I'm gonna travel back, get to that junction box. I'm gonna shoot some lube in there too, which is just gonna be immediately before the next 200, uh, sorry, 120 degrees worth of bends. So that will get, it'll get some fresh lube over there. So let's start heading that way. And real quick before I actually get over there, let me show you this. I'm hanging the wires here on just a piece of 3 8 inch or number 3 rebar right here. And I'm hanging it from the sea purlins. And yesterday I was praying for some way to be able to hang the lights from the purlin. This, this purlin is, is structural here and I don't want to drill a bunch of holes into it. I don't mind putting a small self-tapper in there just to hold an electrical box, but I'm not going to drill like bolt holes and stuff. And uh, Anyway, I wanted to hang the lights from it. So what I did was I took the side plate from these boxes that I'm using. You can remove a side plate and then you can gang them together. So I've got a sheet metal break, although I could have used a, a vise and a hammer. I'll make a video on this. But praise the Lord, I was able to bend this over just like that and hang it inside the recess on that C channel. And then I used uh, aircraft cable and crimp ferrules and I made a hanger there and I came down here just to a loop. The 3 8 inch rebar passes through there obviously and then I'll actually have a clip then it'll clip onto the light which is you can see over there there's a light over there right now it's just tied up with uh, some scrap wire. I'm waiting for Amazon to deliver the hangers that I'll use but in case that is actually pretty doggone cool so I thank God for that. That's uh, that's the answer I needed to hanging things and also hanging the wires. That's pretty cool so I'll put this back on the tripod and we'll make that trip now. It's slow, really slow. Okay, here we are, junction box we're we'll passing it through. Take the flexible tube, pass it up inside there. It's a lot easier without all the other wires in the way. One, two, three, four, five, six. That ought to be good enough. Okay, and there's always little bubbles, which this may or may not show up on here, but there, there are always little bubbles. That, so you can see that the, that the lubricant is actually flowing through this clear tube. It's pretty handy. Okay, back to the uh, snail's pace move. Okay, so here we are at the pull point. Instead of being cavalier, I'm going to use the fish tape this time. And yeah, we'll see how it goes. As long as I don't hang that mid, that junction box in the middle, we're going to be good. So I hate using the uh, fish tape. I hit the slick spot in the junction box already. Thank you. 
that was pretty doggone easy. Now I've got to leave a loop at that junction box. So I'm going to waste a little wire here and save a little time. I'll clip this off. Uh, I'll bend it back sharply to kind of sort of anchor this in. I'll go back and pull my loops on the junction box. Then I'll go back and clip those wires. And I'm telling you, uh, I know it's a really simple pull. It's only three conductors, one of them stranded. Still, that's 240 degrees of bends, and I've been having trouble pulling it dry uh, in less bends than that. And it's just, thank God, this, this, I like this. This works. I don't have a crew. I don't have a helper. I have to do this stuff myself. So this is, uh, this is working uh, really, really well.